2014 meeting of the Peaksville Common Council. This is a committee of the whole meeting. It's our work session. Um, and tonight we have uh, two important presentations. Uh, the first one is the um, uh, Bob Mitchell, our architect for the Peaksville Central Firehouse. Bob, we spent a lot of time going over this. Um, we uh, came in and asked you to scale it down and bring down the cost. Yes. And you have the final uh, work product on that, correct? I do, I do. And this was something that's been approved by the department? Yes, the department is The building committee. Plan. Okay, they're give us the ready, highlights. They're anxious to see it built. And the and public is anxious to see it. Everybody's yes. talking about it. And, and thank you for having stimulated the undertaking that got it tightened up. And I think it's an improved building. Well, thank you for rising to the challenge. A lot of times uh, people say it can't be done, and, and uh, but I'm glad that you came through, and let's see what you came up with. Okay, so here we are. This is the building floor plan, and um, maybe... I guess I'll have to sit here because uh, of the microphone, but yeah, <clears throat> apparatus bay is in sort of the pea soup green, and the spaces that are intermixed with it that are sort of uh, orange are the firematic support spaces, things like decon and SCBA and firematic storage in the radio room. The purple spaces to the right of that are general support spaces, mechanical spaces. If you go to the bottom right, the uh, entry, which is uh, the public li lobby and museum space, uh, is uh, gives you access on the left to the offices of the fire department and to the right and up the green spaces are the social and living spaces for both the volunteers <coughs> and the career firefighters on the second floor there is airspace over the apparatus as would be required and the orange is the mezzanine that uh, is at an elevation of nine foot eight inches and um, the purple that's behind it, the small rooms are storage rooms for the individual fire departments, companies that are coming in, so they can keep memorabilia, and then a utility space to the right of that. The bottom right, again, is the upper portion of the lobby. It brings you to an upper balcony. There's a, the, uh, to the left of it in the green <coughs> is the physical exercise gym and lockers, which will be available to the department and to the city. The large space on the upper portion on the right is the meeting room, which has been reduced from the 300-person room in the prior design to a 200-person room. It's dividable in two, and uh, it can be used for training. Uh, show me which is the red light. Uh, okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Here. Thank you. So it's divisible by in half. In the same way in the prior design, the kitchen and table and chair storage and all that stuff works independently for either half. And then in the vestibule area to it here are the public bathrooms. So this is just a little close-up of the apparatus bay. You see all of the apparatus that had been requested to be stored in the building is in it. And here's a radio room and a bathroom and EMS uh, support. Uh, you, you see the decon laundry, the air compressor and uh, breathing bottle, fill station, mechanics room, hose storage, firematic storage. Uh, it is, in fact, the one piece that is almost identical to the prior design, the apparatus floor. Uh, this is the mezzanine, as you saw before, with the individual storage rooms for the different companies. There are training features built into the mezzanine. This little round thing here, for instance, is a manhole that allows them to do confined space extrication from below it, which is the, the uh, radio room area, up. Over here, and this, this is a section of solid wall with a window, they can practice w bailing out and head first exiting, which they would have to do if they're in a building when there's a flashover. These are some of the training features that will be incorporated in the building, and I, I want to just emphasize the importance of training. Uh, you know, it's, it's even an OSHA requirement that the people who do this work be properly trained to safely perform the work. And the easier we make it to do it here, the more easily they'll do it. So this is called mask confidence, confined space maze. This is a confined space extrication vertical force entry door, another kind of a entanglement maze. Uh, this is called the Denver drill. This is the bailout window, and this is the bailout window with the heads first down onto the ladder. 
So when you come in the lobby, if you're a visitor coming into the lobby and you're here to do administrative visit, you come to the service window, and, and I want to say at this point, because it's, this is a building that's being designed for a 100-year useful life. And I know that at this point you do not have an active administration in the department that's in residence. But over the life of the building, you will. So that is where the receptionist would, would greet somebody at the window and direct them into the space where they could meet with the chief or the deputy chief. There's a conference room here. And there are two offices here for the staff, one for volunteer staff and one for career staff. And you'll see there's small study carrels like you might see at a library. But to give them a place to process paper, there is uh, the, a burgeoning, as I'm sure you know, paperwork in all fields. And all of the paperwork that's part of the fire service has to comply with HIPAA. People need places to do this work. Yesterday's New York Times had a large article in it that you may or may not have seen about the declining enrollment in volunteer firefighting because they said it isn't as much fun as it used to be, <laughs> in large part because of all the paperwork they have to do. They did also point out that the volunteer fire service saves the American economy $1.4 billion a year the value of the volunteer service. So coming up, uh, if you're a firefighter, either a volunteer or career, you would come into this door, and the first space you see here is the volunteer day room. And it's a recreational space, and they can cook, they can eat, they can relax, they can shoot a game of pool. This is the career day room, and they have a kitchen in the upper portion right. They have a dining table and the ability to watch TV, and a door here. Uh, above that, uh, all the way to the left, sorry, is a emergency bunk room for the volunteers. So under stormy or standby weather or standby conditions, they can be in residence in the building. Uh, across the top are the career bedrooms. And the other thing that's in this portion of the building are the bathrooms and a janitor's closet. And unlike the prior design, in this instance, if the alarm goes off, that's the path that takes you right into the apparatus bay. No stairs. None of the concerns that were there before about whether it's a stair or a pole, and which is more dangerous. On the upper floor, we have an exercise room for the department and could be for other municipal employees. It is a city-owned room. And there is a shower and small locker area so that people who are not in residence in the building can come and have a place to hang up their clothes while they're working out and can freshen up before leaving. The upper rear portion of the building, you come from the elevator into the lobby that services the meeting training room, which you can see is divisible, as we talked earlier, kitchen, tables and chairs, pantries, and the public bathrooms. And then this is open to the space below the museum lobby. OK, the way this works on the site, previously this was the taking line. Okay, And uh, one of the principal motivations of what the mayor was promoting at the start of this was to be able to not have to take any of that area hatched in black. And so we are now talking about this as the taking line. And we've reduced from 1.72 acres to 1.19 acres, a 33% reduction in the land taking. And we're not touching the only building of the developer of the property owners that's being taken is the liquor store building. So none of the continuous, contiguous spaces are taken. So this is what it looks like in aerial plan. You see, the, of course, the new station. And adjacent the station along the back is an outdoor recreation space for the department to use. And this here is a space for the dumpster and the generator and the recycling bins and so on. Uh, there will be a, a landscape wall that will screen that from the shopping center. We, didn't, we haven't drawn it yet. So this is what you see coming up Main Street, looking to the east. Uh, the building projects forward of the shopping center slightly. There's a niche in the corner for when someone donates a statue to the department <laughs> or to the city. Um, and in part to give it some visual strength coming from this direction. Because this is not, as you know, the door does not face this way. In the prior design, there was the entry tower facing the main. And uh, now, the entry is, is approached from the corner. 
it allows us to reduce, you know, there were some comments previously about why are there three towers. I don't know if any of you remember that complaint. So we're, we're, we've gotten rid of the main tower that was on Main Street. And you'll see that this tower element serves the building well. The tower element to the left is a training device. This is where the confined space extrication occurs um, and, and other related trainings. Uh, we have the opportunity to memorialize the purpose of the building and, uh, and so that one does not ever forget the purpose and the, the commitment and risk that these people take on on behalf of all of us. And, and this is what you see coming <clears throat> up, going north on Broad. So uh, there is parking at the south end of the building. And then from the shopping center, you would see this with the exception that we will be adding the landscape wall here to uh, close the uh, outdoor recreational space and dumpster area from view from the parking of the shopping center. Uh, we expect it to be attractive and uh, end at night to allow it to be the beacon and the entrance to the community. There was conversation back way back when about it being a, uh, a gateway for people coming from the east. And we've, we've tried to maintain that intent with a, uh, which I think in truth it's better than it was before because the corner is so strong, having the entry element. Um, sorry about that. And uh, so, and then going into the lobby, uh, the lobby serves as a museum for these two, I, I suppose you all know about the two phenomenal pieces of historic apparatus that you have. Uh, the one on the left has been restored. The one on the shown centered above is not restored yet. But it will, uh, you know, it can purposefully be used. And you know, so the lobby serves double meaning. The, the entry allows for that antique, the mirrored hose carrier to be, uh, you know, which is a parade piece from the 1880s, um, to be used as a demonstration. Now, where we are in terms of the project from where we were, uh, in, in 2009, the budget was 15.68 million, which was predicated on more square footage than now, but a lower cost per square foot because it's, you know, it's 2014, not 2009. The, um, that, that building as designed projected forward to today would have been, um, even with the monies having been spent on professional fees and all that, it'd still be 16.1 million to expend. Uh, with the reduction in the size, which was about a 20% reduction in size, and some of the actual simplification in the building, the elimination of one of the towers, the, the old meeting room projecting out from the two-story mass was a more expensive element per square foot than the stuff is that's part of the two-story structure. It is now at 12.9 million, and it's a saving of 3.25 million. In, in the EIS for the firehouse, it said that the 15.8 million included 2. Point, let's say 2.8 or 15.6 was the projected cost, and 2.8 of that was for land acquisition. Yes, that's this number right here. Which number is that? 2750. Okay. And you should have copies of this, I believe. Is that true? Yeah. I see around the table. Okay. Right. So just to be clear, the, the building was not fifteen point oh, eight million correct. dollars. The total project. The total project, which included soft costs, Everything. land acquisition, and much of that land acquisition, at least half of that has been done already. <clears throat> right. And and then yeah. and then the remaining portion has been reduced right. by an amount that we're not clear right. on that, but but by a significant amount. Right. Well, how okay. much of the fifteen Point six or the sixteen point one was construction cost. If you look towards the bottom, you'll see here we were at nine point eight plus a contingency of basically of not, not well here I'll take it back ten point seven eight 
right here, 10,788,000. And then that had grown for the same building to 12,422,000. Because of inflation. Because of inflation, which mm -hmm. had been mitigated by the recession in, you know, the right. 2010. That's, that's down to 10.1 now. And now it's down to 10.1. So that's what it, um, well, from 10.8 to 10.1. It's about 20%. It's about um, seven, seven hundred thousand dollars. Twenty percent reduction. Yeah. So, well, two point three divided into. 12. Not really good with the numbers, but yeah. it's, it's about twenty percent reduction. Eighteen or twenty percent. It's six hundred thousand dollars out of ten million. No, it's twelve point four in today's cost. Right. That's this number here. Twelve point four is brought down to ten point one. So it's two point. Two two point three two point three million divided into twelve million is somewhere north of eighteen percent. Eighteen twenty. Eighteen to twenty percent. These are all projections and estimates. Because I'll tell you right now. I mean, you have in here two hundred thousand dollars of moving costs. I was asked to add. That. Yes. Yes. Moving. Moving. Moving what? Oh, uh, moving the fire your department. Your equipment. Your 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 desks. Your whatever. We have, a, we have yeah, a department. You have five departments. Like right. Yeah. And we have departments full of volunteers that right. probably mitigate. Yeah, we'll pick that apart. Right? Later. <laughs> We're not hiring a professional moving company to move out of our own firehouses. Yes. Yes. Right. It's, it's a placeholder. These are worst case scenarios. Yes, I think it's, a, it's a, right. It's a better safe than sorry kind right. of number. I understand. Correct. It's also. Uh, right. well, what's the size reduction percentage wise? It was. It's about twenty percent. Also, it's all relative. Yeah. So then, um, let's see. What else do we have here? Schedule, and this is something that I, I'm, I'm hoping. I mean, it, so could uh, just to uh, just to, go, to back? go back? Yeah. Just I just want to be clear on what the total cost of this project now is. Is it twelve point nine? Twelve point nine going 12 forward. Million going forward. Nine hundred and eight thousand dollars. And that's including the land that's already been bought. That's including the land to buy. To buy, not including not the land that has so already been if bought. If you're looking right. at, at total cost, which it seems like we're sort of struggling trying to get final cost. Well, then you would have to add back in the money that you spent on the corner parcels. Right. Okay. On, both, on both the before and after. And also the first set of plans that you just redrew, right? The, the money expended with us, that's... That's right. That's right. Because that you did construction documents, did you not? Yeah, we often there you refer go. to that okay. as the uh, sunk costs, which, so, you know, we're going forward from that point, obviously, no matter what project we're going on. Right. So you're right. Okay. The, oh, you know, um, well, interesting that you say that, because I think this blue column only reflects going forward costs for architectural services. So, so it really is, we really are comparing the 12.9 with the 16.1. Except for land acquisition. In right. either case, right. you, which would, one of which them regardless of what we would, that's a sunk cost, right? Right, and that's okay. the same in both cases. The 1.8 carried in the blue column was the number that was being expected to have to pay to the shopping center owner. Good, good. So right. is that in the green number too? The 1.8 yeah. or no? Well, it's down to the five. It's yeah. at that point, it's 500,000 because we think we're only buying that, the yeah, liquor store. Right. Number for now. right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Schedule. So I think you you were provided a copy of this. Um, we are of the belief that it's in your best interest to be prepared to start foundation work this fall. You can do that and accelerate the project mm -hmm. significantly because for, uh, here's some of the benefits that come out of it. Because you're only going to be bidding out the amount of site work needed to do the foundations and the foundations. The level of risk for the bidders is much smaller than it would be if they were bidding the entire package. Because there's going to be, in, in any project, the minute you get out of the ground, you just, you take it, you breathe a sigh of relief. And especially in an urban site. So, so we want to get that over with so that the people who are coming to bid the major bulk of the project are looking at a nice, neat site, a foundation, anchor bolts, mm -hmm. and, in, and in this case, we're hoping standing steel. And then that allows them to bid optimistically and tightly because we're reducing their total exposure. What's the, uh, 
as far as foundation goes, you have a full basement in that building? No, it's all slab on grade. It's all grade. slab on grade, so yeah. you're not really too concerned with utility relocation. Maybe some mitigation that has to happen there. But the thing I'm concerned about is, and we're going to be doing geotechnical boring. We have some permission, apparently, at this point from the property owner. Yeah, yeah. Almost. We're working on it. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm requesting some mapping from before urban renewal. I want to get some of these holes drilled in old cellar holes. Right. So, because we don't know in 1970, whatever that was, or 60, whatever that was, if they did any more than just bulldoze some stuff into the hole. And we obviously ah, so that, that would be failed. Hmm. Okay, go ahead. That's, That's pretty right. typical. It's right. pretty typical, and then we would, we would, the geotechnical engineer would tell us what to do about it. We've, we've had that issue before. You know, you in effect. You know, those buildings weren't that wide. Let's say they were 30 feet wide. If we don't have an enormous point load at that point, let's say it's a normal exterior wall, so then we're sure. basically going to build a beam that spans it, sort of like a bridge in your mouth, you know, yeah. and, and two good abutments on either side and not have... And the other thing is whatever's there, if it's not garbage, it's had all those years to compact on its own, you know, well, Plus we have, we have buildings on, those, on that site currently. Yes. So. Oh, so that's right. So a portion of it we know what's there. The two corner buildings. So anyway, what what my my goal for you would be that that piece of it gets started right away. We could prepare the foundation plans and the limited scope of the site work over the next six weeks or so and get it on the street. But we don't own the land, right? You have to feel that you are going to be able to close to to feel that that's worth doing. You'll so save. We still have to finish the eminent domain process to pick up that final bit of the land. We can talk about that in the second session. No, so I just want to make it clear that I mean, because may not be needed. We yeah, I mean, there's there's still a lot of moving parts here before we dig into the ground. Right. We don't actually own the land. Right. No. So at some level, there is a bit of there's some risk and there's some reward because right. you'll save you'll save about twenty five thousand dollars a month for every month that you can accelerate the work, you'll get tighter bids out of people by breaking it yes. down into these packages. If we bid everything in the spring, the number will certainly be higher than the sum of the, the three parts. The so they, that's, that's the way to go. Yeah. And, and you know, there are some very volatile components right now in the construction market based on what's going on in, in the Middle East with ISIS. People that are bidding jobs that we're doing right now, they don't want to commit to what they're going to pay for asphalt in a year. Mm. They, don't, they just don't want to do it. So, so my wish would be for you to say, start that portion of the drawings, please. Yeah. Uh, if we can, I, I'd say break ground and let's go. Well, if we can go forward with this phase, we have to do the bond, but... We can do that with the money we have already set aside, right, Anthony? If you don't want to do the bond. I think we're looking for authorization to move ahead. Yeah, we need to authorize so, I mean, the Bob has changing enough. Bob's contract or, or an adjustment. You have you have money remaining in the existing contract that the yes. bond covers, yes. correct? Correct. Yeah, correct. I see correct. there's an additional fees that are required. Has that been fully negotiated yet, or is that? Well, Jim and I have talked yeah. through it. We've talked it through. Pretty well, much line by line. Here. Yeah. Well, we've what we've had to do is go through this drawing set and look at which details are still usable and which are throwaways. Right. Can I just ask a question on on this breakdown? Um, in-house cost to complete the construction drawings. Who's in-house cost? Our in-house cost. Or your in-house cost. In-house means also my consultants. I got you. And, and just so you know, in the intervening time, one of the consultants has passed away. Oh. And, and one of them's gone out of business. So there's some... And there hasn't been construction picking. drawings previously designed for the initial design? Or there was? That's what this bundle right was. Yeah, those are complete. So, this is, so, you this have, so you have some usable... Correct. Yeah, what we did is we went through section by section to see what was uh, recoverable from this set. Okay. And that's how we came up with this fee. So this, this would have been a, a different fee if it was from scratch. What portion was recoverable? Um, we have a number here. Remember. Looks like 50%, oh, wait a minute. maybe? Uh, okay. uh, 40, I'll be able, I'll be able to tell you that. Just based on your values, I would say. A 40% had to be the hit. So 60% of the work is recoverable, 40% is needed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
percent of the building. Does that represent the forty percent? How much? Well, how much do we lose? There's there's a bunch of things that are throwaways, like the old uh, meeting room was a free spanning mm -hmm. room. Yeah, none of that's there anymore. All that stuff has to be worked inside, reworked inside the framing system. The well, I, let me describe, for instance, the structural engineer. He has almost no work to do in the apparatus bay because that's unchanged. Everything that he did on the other side of the building is a complete throwaway. The um, we can rent that out, right, Anthony? That that room. We can make some money on that city. We'd have to look at it. I mean, I don't know if that's. It's a we, two hundred. Take a look at that. It's a two hundred room capacity and has its own kitchen, right? Yes, and it's completely ADA compliant. And so yeah, I, so I, I agree. Use that. Well, but we'd have to talk about that too. Remember, it's a city it's building. City building it's a city building. building. The whole yeah, city it's going to change. We clean that building. We operate and maintain it. There's no alcohol. Right. So it's going to change a little bit. Of the, so, so how it's structured as far as operating is something we still There's need no to more leases walk our yeah, yeah walk ourselves through. Okay. So. It's pretty far down the road. Well, the others are city buildings too, except for two. Right, but I think there were long, long-standing agreements. But now that we're moving into a new building, I think we need to look at some of those set policies. All right. So, getting getting back to the architectural drawing, is there separate everything for women firefighters? Is that a requirement or? It's a requirement. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the way that's being handled is that these are basically like dormitory bedrooms, so you can have any mix. Of male and female, and they're separate male female lavatories and right. showers and everything. Right, it's basically well, actually, they turn out in that portion of the building there, one person at a time unisex bathrooms. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, and that is that is the trend because you, you know um, some of well, I'm just you know okay, one of the fire departments I'm working with, both the chairman of the board of commissioners and the chief are women, mm -hmm. and the, you know this is a the, everything's trending that way. Mm -hmm. It's good. Can and you go back to the floor plan? plan? I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Can you go back to the floor plan? Sure. Uh, what happened? I jumped. Um, the second floor. Second floor. floor. I'm sorry, the first floor. Could you blow up that right side? I can. Uh, I have a whole other image that does that. Right. Almost there. There we go. Now that wall between the um, the two rooms is that that can easily be removed, right? This, it's not a weight bearing this, wall. None of this is. No partitions here are weight bearing. Everything's columns and beams. I think, I think you mean the day rooms. They're not portable. Between the two day rooms. The two day rooms. Th this can be dismantled in the future. So if, if in the future you had no volunteers, somewhere in the next hundred years you'll have no volunteers, right? It's a fair Don't say assessment. That. Well, well, our hope is that we would continue to have volunteers, but our volunteers and career workers would get along better. Yeah, when they all get along, and they, hopefully they all get along. They can share. Maybe when you make a $12 million investment, they could see fit to maybe see their differences out. I mean. That would be nice that we right. have two rooms right. instead of one. The question is, it can be made instead of two rooms. Into one, one room. room. Correct. Yeah, it's I'm not, not a suggesting room. In other words, yeah, that's not suggesting dividing we get rid of the paid partition can come uh, professionals. Okay. So you, we can make it. So, you know, and this varies from department to department. If I think about Kingston, Pennsylvania, there's no differentiation. It's also a blended department. With the professionals and the volunteers. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not uh, suggesting that we get rid of either one, but... I am no, what I meant is they have both professionals and volunteers in Kingston, but there's no wall between the two halves. Right. There's exactly. no they differentiation. Cook together, they they cohabitate. There should not be a differentiation. <laughs> but right. yes. I think if you're forced to sit down and eat together, maybe we could stop some of the nonsense. That's going <laughs> on. There are two kitchens and one in each room? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. So yes. that'll be a savings, too. Well, yes. And, and so the culture behind that is that in, in most departments that I work with, where there's a, a blended department like this, the career guys do not want the volunteers in their living space. space. They feel these guys flow through, they make it dirty, they leave. Mm -hmm. If it's just their, the, uh, the other career guys in, everybody knows whose bag of something that was left on the couch. And uh, 
I understand. And so I think I think for the twenty five for the health of the organization for the foreseeable future you need to have it differentiated. Well there's gonna be a period of adjustment which was always part of what was being considered in in building this, right? I mean yeah, yeah. you've got six five or six different fire companies that have had their own identity and now that's not gonna be there as pronounced as it was. That's why it was important to have a larger room and all the rest of that stuff. Yep. So we've sort of taken 20% of the the old drawing away, which was the bigger room. Yeah. And now it's costing us an additional 40% of the um, documents. The, docu the documents have to be right. thrown away and redone right. uh, to save what essentially is Crossroads Shopping Center. It's a matter of a few hundred thousand as opposed to a million and a half, so it's a right. pretty big difference. Well, and we, but we saved Crossroads Shopping Plaza. That's yeah. I'm pointing that's that out too. A big taxpayer. In the city. Well, yeah, we took the, the we took it, part of it though, Benny. Ambulance car in there? It's unbelievable. I mean, uh, yeah. Just tell. Them. But we have room. It's not yeah, it could be time. I mean, it, the um, the apparatus bay area in particular addresses all of the current issues with regard to communicable disease and, and other kind of toxic element isolation. And I don't know if you heard just recently there was a MRSA outbreak at the training fire training center in New York yeah. City on Randall's Island. This is this is the future. These people go into people's houses and they get on their hands and knees and they come back. You know, nobody's come back with Ebola. But I mean, everybody's in the last weeks have been thinking about, I assume, you know, how, how, when does that come in through Kennedy Airport? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we, we do have that whole portion of the building designed to be uh, a tight boundary between the dirty side and the clean side. And it will support the use of, uh, it'll support the activity of an EMS component. Okay, any other questions? Good job, congratulations, and, and thank you so much for, uh, it's a great job. Thank you. And, and you'll let me know when and if to start with the panel to the drawings. Well, I think okay. we have to go forward with the drawings, right? We should start the final drawings. You need a contract for that, right? No, right now, I just need a verbal. I think you just need to. I need, I need I you guys to say do it. I think we're all on board with that. If we need a resolution, Anthony? No, I think, no, it's still in his contract. Uh, we, we need to amend your amended, correct? Right, yeah. we need to amend the contract. Or just it's not going to be any more changes, on. I don't think. That's wrong. Right. No, 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 no. That's his estimate. Existing, no, that's existing contract that he currently has is enough to cover correct. the design of the, the um, final the construction plan. So, so what's the additional fees yeah, required so above and beyond the balance in 2010? That's 470 I, I can explain that. What we're going to be doing, in effect, is taking the money that in the old contract would be used for our services during construction administration, meaning after bidding, and spend some of that now to get the these design. drawings moved along, and then backfill it with the adjustment to the contract. Oh, I see. So this is paid? This, this, this 417 is already But just paid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I see. Now yeah. yeah. the four... Uh, uh, yeah. So, yeah. No. So, so the 417000 was originally for you to yeah. sort of oversee the construction as it moved forward. I think and I, what you'll do now is you'll use that to redo the drawings and the additional money that they are requesting is then for him to oversee the construction moving forward. It's but we're not, married, right. we're not married to that. Right, it's a Peter and Paul question about where, so, which pocket is the money in. Right. There's enough money Either left way. in the contract for us to, to, get to do a lot of this drawing work. Design. There was yeah. a resolution with a dollar amount of the original contract. So still has money. That, yeah. Right. So we're not into a change order situation that we found ourselves in a couple of So there's still money in that original contract and resolution that in he the, can move forward. In the new contract moving forward, the, the money set aside for an architect to provide support during construction that's what that four hundred seventeen thousand dollars is. I don't know if it's an exact swap, yeah, but, but in yes, yeah, sure right. I haven't thought about it that way. So either right. way, when we go into construction, you need to have the architect involved in the process. Right. To oversee that would be part of our right. new when we go out to so that's bond. The additional that would be the 
you know, part of the project. Part right. In the meantime, you're covered with the funds that are so that not spent. So for our next steps, we just need to, Jim, if you can walk us through our next steps. <coughs> Yeah, the, the next steps would be, again, to give Bob uh, an authorization, letting him spend that money as we just discussed. Uh, then we go to uh, design drawings, really, uh, for the foundation in particular and the steel. Those are the elements you want to get in the ground and out of the ground over the winter so that you've got a clean slate to start on the third package, which would be the building package, which would be, as Bob said, very straightforward, would get you to uh, up and running in the spring and you get through, through the winter. Um, with these elements out of the ground. That's the most ideal way to do construction. It'll keep your costs down also. You get better prices that way. So while we're while we're putting in the foundation, we'll be bidding the actual rest we'll of the right. Yeah, so that's correct. In the spring, we'll be ready to go. I think right. that's, that's covered in that gas chart. Yeah. yeah, I saw the yeah, you schedule. You're absolutely right. And I, don't, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I think it's strange to begin spending money for a site that you don't own yet. Are you I mean, kidding? I wouldn't. <laughs> You're not saying that, right? I mean, no, I'm, I'm, how much money has been spent on this site that we yeah, didn't know? Exactly. It's all so, rolled up right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But do you want to continue? Three million dollars. <laughs> you know, there's something they haven't told us yet. We'll get it later. You didn't catch that earlier. And apparently, negotiations are ongoing. So. Yeah. Well, hold on a second. The, the the property that's we have a court opinion that says it's a public taking. So we we okay. eminent domain can happen relatively quickly. We're negotiating with the last property owner, and he's at here and we're at here, but my understanding is that we're getting an opinion from council that says we can go forward with the taking, move his tenant out, and tear down that building and start our construction cost without having a resolution on whether it's going to cost us what he's asking or what we're asking, and go forward with the court case and let and the, the court, court determine design. what the price is going to be. So we now have a high, we have a low, what the city's offering. We have ours is supported by our appraisal, so I don't want to throw these numbers around here, but I will in executive session. And um, so we, I'm pretty confident the number is going to be almost exactly in the middle, right, Anthony? We're open. And uh, <laughs> so we don't That's have to wait. <laughs> we don't actually own that property, but we don't have to wait for that to get this process going. Right. So the um, the property is done. The plans are done. The money to at least finish the construction plans are done. Let's get it out. Let's get it moving. Well, and still have start working about on the bond once we resolve. The rest of it. I mean, there, the rest we, of it. we still have to do a number of these things anyway to move forward. So there's no sense in waiting and holding them up. Uh, well, we hope to have geotechnical. Didn't know that. That's all. Yeah. We, we hope to be on covered. there. I think we need the geotechnical to do. So we hope to be on there. Trust me, I got to do that. Right. So there, there are a number of yeah, things that, that'll keep us busy. There's plenty going on, and hard cost escalation, as Bob mentioned, at twenty-five thousand dollars a month is going to eat you up if you don't start. So there's actually an advantage to getting the design yeah. earlier. So yeah. And and it is my it's my it's my experience that getting doing it the way we're talking about pulling the foundation package out, you, you will pay hundreds of thousands of dollars of benefit down the road mm -hmm. because when contractors in the spring walk up to a site and they see it, a foundation and steel standing up and they don't have to worry about what's under the ground anymore. They can just come in and start laying block and right. doing all that stuff and running. Right. And they're going to be pretty excited about it because for them, you know, they have, they have fixed overhead cost and a lot of what happens at the start of the job and at the end of the job is wasted time. At the start of the job, it's because they can't mobilize. At the end of the job, it's because they can't find their dust rag <laughs> and finish the damn thing and go home. So if they see if they see this thing shovel ready, let's go. They're going to be anxious to go get it, and sure. you'll benefit from that. Bob, right. there were a lot of green aspects in the old building. Are they still there? Yes. The things that will not be there is applying for lead accreditation because mm -hmm. of the. It turned out, you know, we've already spent. I don't even know what we spent. I, I can go back and find out. Seventy-five, eighty thousand dollars on paperwork mm -hmm. for lead, and it was going to be another hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars worth of paperwork for lead. You have to have people examining the dumpsters mm -hmm. before they left to make sure that there wasn't stuff going to the wrong location. Now I, we're not going to get that carried away. I don't have the stamina for it, and you guys don't mm -hmm. have the money for it. Mm -hmm. We're going to do all the same things we were talking about doing in terms of the type of materials. I, in fact, spent time on the phone on the drive down with a structural engineer who uh, was a friend of mine who's very into green construction. Mm -hmm. 
I'm hoping, you know, you, this building typically, any other contractor building it, your R value of the walls would be 12 or 13. I think we're going to have an R value of 30. And our, our value in this roof system is going to be about 50. You're going to have an, a super energy efficient building that 50, 80 years from now, people are going to say, wow, that was, they were really thinking ahead. Mm -hmm. so, so. Can I just ask Good. a question? Um, in terms of like, in, in your estimate, what would make the difference in kitchen equipment? Did we reduce kitchens that you? We reduced the size of the kitchen and the expectation of the type of stuff. Back then, there was a kitchen committee that brought in a kitchen consultant who, uh, whose position was, <laughs> you, you've heard that story in other jobs, a commercial grade oven stove wasn't good enough. There's a higher tier. Okay. So all of a sudden, each stove, you know, there was $120,000 worth of kitchen equipment in the one kitchen. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not Donald Trump's kitchen. It's the fire department's kitchen. I have, I have a question, too, because I got like about a 10 paragraph email from a citizen today. Um, one of the things is, uh, he says, well, the expectation is that what is inside the box, as well as the box, will be made public um, uh, in an easy to access manner. Uh, the, he says the materials presented online are not very comprehensive in terms of what's being built and what function it serves. So it's sort of, I'm asking the question on his behalf and perhaps others Could this be is, yeah. is oh, yeah. well if, you know is this considered the finished floor plan is, is bad. yeah and I, will yeah. this be online we, we we you know historically we did that in the past we're happy to provide you with yeah. um pdf that they can scroll through like it's a powerpoint right with yeah. each, each I think independent that would be excellent. so but are those that want to micromanage it but let's get the big ball rolling okay then they can micromanage it from wherever Okay. Oh, this isn't yeah. micromanaging. You know, it's a, a lot of money concern. you're asking the taxpayers to spend, Mayor. Yeah, you know, 25% less. I think that's a little cavalier on your part. 25% less say. than you want to spend. I don't so, want to argue uh, with you. Let's get I it done. I think you're not going to wrap argue. it up. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, Bob, well, thank you very much. Well, thank you, everybody. And, thank uh, you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you for trusting okay. me all these years to work for you. Thank you. We'll, uh, if, if we have the ribbon cutting in 2016, it will be on the 20th anniversary of the day I interviewed for the fire station design. Oh, so. that'd be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> the 20th anniversary. Okay. Anybody have any concerns or issues? Thank you, Bob. You're welcome. Yes, I do. Go shoot. Go ahead. Go. Yes, just there. Go. I do. Yep. Can I? Did you have something, Joe? I have I, I had something to bring up. I just, a while back, we had discussed about hiring a new building inspector. Yeah. Which I think, you know, every month that goes by, we hear people talk about the need for it. So I want to see, you know, what the city's thinking was about that. Um, there'll be a number of positions that we'll bring forth in uh, the 2015 budget. Mm -hmm. So that'll be one of them. Number of positions? Mm -hmm. We can't do it this year? No. Budget constraint? Yes. Who's our building inspector now? I'm sorry, what? Who's, who's our building inspector? I mean, we have three, four. We have two assistant building inspectors. Two assistant. Right. right. So when Victor retired, the position of building inspector essentially fell to the director of public works. Okay. Um, so Brent signs off on the building uh, form. So we have two assistant building inspectors. We have a code enforcement, code enforcement officer one code enforcement officer and um, plumbing and uh, plumbing inspector. Okay. So I mean, I, I believe it warrants an additional, whether it's an assistant building inspector or a building inspector or a code enforcement, I, I believe the building department warrants an additional body. I think they're it's a little understaffed too. in there. Uh, there's a number I know we go back and forth on quality of life issues, so I really think it's it's needed. But well, again, yeah, at, at this point, I'm sorry, what, Mayor? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. As you can say, at, at this point, so close to budget, I think the appropriate time is to discuss this and other uh, okay. um, items at, at budget time. So, okay. right, but no, but I, I, I agree, and yeah. I'm not. But, I, but um, if I hear one more time that this assistant keeps telling people that he's that we don't have a building inspector, and he tells people that, and it gets back to us, I think somebody ought to tell him. And it's not a personnel issue, because I'm not going to tell you who it is, but you know who it is. 
Um, he should zip it and do the job. And, and everybody has to buckle up and, and, you know, we're under a lot of budget constraints here. And we all, we're all in this together. But we don't need him moaning that, he's, that we don't have a building inspector. I'm tired of hearing about it. I'm sure the rest of you have heard it too. I have um, a question about uh, update, and I guess maybe it's connected a little bit to the building inspector issue about Constant Avenue. Uh, you know, I continue to get emails um, from some of the res residents there. Well, we just sent off a number of uh, updates to the council regarding yeah. that area. I right. just emailed that to the council. I mean, it's a continuous, and I, and I understand. Well, the question specifically was about the uh, suggestion that had been made during a meeting mm -hmm. here uh, that the mayor and um, Councilman Torres was in attendance at. Um, you, you weren't at that meeting. Oh, okay. Um, about the uh, permits? About right. parking permits, and I know that that was problematic. Um, we, you had said that that yeah, might we be problematic. At this, um, we tried this a number of years ago. I, I don't remember if the mayor was corp council at that time, but no, I mean it was a few years. It was quite a yeah. few years ago. There are a number of issues with the residential mm -hmm. parking permits. I mean, in the particular neighborhood we were looking at, I know there was issues. There was uh, complaints about uh, the commuters parking there. So then it was, uh, you know, putting restrictions on public streets. I think there were a number of legal issues with that. Then there was the code enforcement, the enforcement issue of it. Um, and then it was, how do you know if somebody's visiting and not visiting, if there's a party or not? So th there were a number of issues we had to work through, and it's not as simple as just saying each house has two permits or right. whatever the law comes to. And the um, the initial process, I, I, it, it, this went on for about the first two years that I was on the council, but the, the initial process requires actually a resolution and a request to go up to the state legislature another, uh, in order to get private, basically private parking spaces on a public street. You have to get them to pass and approve legislation that would allow for a special residential parking district so that process takes time and then once we got that finally approved and the city said okay let's do it they met with the residents and what really became the issue was first of all 25 percent of all the parking on the public streets has to remain open to the public and it could be in front of anyone's house you can't sort of say you know Okay, so no parking in front. Of, so there are a lot of issues that came up. Uh, if you have four people with four cars, how many parking permits do you get? Ooh. You know, um, these people want that help, and we should uh, do everything we can. That's to, right. This yeah. is a state of emergency. If we have to declare a state of emergency, well, I mean, we'll declare. You know, part of it, I think, is the, is the backyard volleyball games that are bringing people from elsewhere on a consistent if it's it was happening once a month I don't think anybody would really be given that much of a right. darn Not but the fact that is that it's happening night after night after night and if these people are it got right downtown come back no place to park you know if I had to deal with that on a regular basis mm -hmm. I would be blowing sure. my top constantly and I think they've been incredibly patient. So we really need to. Yeah. We have to do something there's about no, it. There's no question about it. I think we've been hearing it right since we got here. I think that the way you don't put permits in play, I mean, it's so problematic. The way to correct this is enforcement. And I know our resources are limited, but uh, this is continually a problematic area. I know we get reports on everything that's being done. Obviously, not enough. So we got to continue to do more until the right. problems resolve because this is just you know it's just no, the, for eight months here this is all we've heard and and, and I'm happens? not casting and blame anybody but we oh. gotta we but really what happens then is that you hear from the police, chief the police that you have to be there and you know right. no I understand the you have to, it, right but right. but, but code I, enforcement is also a big part of that code enforcement but we're up there is also part of that. I mean, we have code enforcement up there we have the police up there so you know. We, we are, and we are trying. We are trying to be diligent, and, and I'm not downplaying their concerns, and right, I no totally I. understand. I yeah. mean, but uh, we, we do take it seriously, and we do continue to go up there. We do try to yeah, be diligent on it. When you see a car that's parked right across the sidewalk, pulled into somebody's driveway, it doesn't fit, so now he's parked across the sidewalk, yeah. and then, you know, I'm told that, well, we need 
somebody to call that in so we can yeah. ticket but it. That time everybody's gone. Uh, well, I, it shouldn't that be done that way. I shouldn't have to walk down the street and walk out into the street around somebody's car. Right. The sidewalk is the sidewalk. How could you be allowed to park, if, even if you own the house? Just saying. You know, I'm just, I, I'm trying to keep on top of that because these people are emailing me and I, I have a great sympathy. You're emailing all of us. I agree with you. I've gone down the street a time, I so, and the one other thing I'd like to ask is uh, for a resolution to um, for the city to fund the cost of the um, commemorative journal for the 75th um, anniversary. And I can give you an estimate on that from the printer and some production work. How much? Um, I don't have it right oh. here, but I'll get it. It's. I think if we decide to print 5,000 copies, which is the middle, I, I got a quote for 2,500, 5,000, and 7,500, uh, without knowing how we're... Is this the one that we're going to sell? I think we can sell it, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, I, if, but there needs to be a, a committee to handle that oh, end of yeah. the deal. But, um, you know, I think if we do 5,000, I think the printing price is maybe 10,500, something like that. I'll give you the specifics. and. That's I was great. asking for like 1500 to cover uh, a young helper to, or even the printer to do some of the production stuff and the production stuff. I'll do the design. I'm donating that. I'm not getting paid for that. And uh, thank you very much for that. Um, we, um, I think, um, we can come up with the 1500 somewhere, right? Well, What's the, the, uh, it was no, it was like ten thousand. Yeah. No, it was about ten thousand five hundred. I thought right now. Is right. the, is you, the you printing cost? You don't need that cost. all right now, though. Right? No, no, no. You need, no. I thought you said fifteen hundred for the helper right now. For the fall, in or, the fall, yeah. Or we'll wrap it into the yeah. And then we'll wrap it into next year's cost, budget. Right? That's exactly how you could do it. Yeah. Um, well, I'll talk to you. I'll, I'll tell you where to get that money. The, ma the mayor's the ma fund. The, the mayor's <laughs> married, the married <laughs> fund. The mayor's yeah, yeah. married fund. That's right. That's food. The pizza okay. one. Okay. I can, uh, I can put that on for a resolution in September. Sure. sure. Yeah, once we have, yes. Yeah, of course. Uh, I can put it on for discussion for the second, and then we can. Uh, Perfect. Thank you. Anything else? Any other concerns and issues? No. I move, um, can we have a motion to go into executive session for matters of real estate? I'll make a motion to go into Well, hold on a second. Are we going to discuss any other things, personnel or anything? Two issues, right? Yeah, I thought I had a personnel item on there. Oh. And then the yeah, real estate. Yeah, I have a question. So there, there, can I ask Sure. Why is this, is there something about this that has to be in executive session? Yeah, real estate. And because we're buying you, it, or I don't understand. Um, it involves city-owned real estate and would, and, a, um, and a, a major project for the city. So it should be an executive session. Matters of real estate are executive session. Right, council? Correct. Uh, Matters of real estate are executive session? I think any time you have that kind of a deal. Say yes so the team people can hear. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. But I think there was also collective had, bargaining. Was correct, but um, Councilwoman Talbot, you want to talk about personnel issues? Yeah. Well, I mean, I just come. I'm just coming back from vacation. I heard uh, something that was of concern about the Youth Bureau Board. Was this an issue that was mailed to the count? Emailed? Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. It may have been. Okay, it's being resolved. But certainly, we can talk about it. And I would that like personnel to. matter, Mayor. Just an update on That's that. That's fine. So I make so a motion we go into executive session for real estate, for collective bargaining, and for personnel issues. Yes, sir. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, we're now in executive session.